Hello, we are recording again. Hello. <coughs> so, this is a follow-up session to our uh, Writer's Corner chat. That was, we basically, uh, we recorded some, uh, some commentary on the forum leakage project. Check them out on our website, trading samples. These here. Chaosnova.co.uk. I'm sh I'm showing it on the screen. Nice. Uh, we intend to uh, do some readings on these uh, reading samples as well. So for now, it is only it is visual interface only. But we do intend to add uh, audio slash video at some point. So these stories will be. Uh, will be accessible to more people than they are now, but yes, right now uh, we, we our uh, our accomplishments are limited, so right now we're happy that we got them up uh, at all. <laughs> but after we got, uh, we finished talking about those, we figured that since we're all prettied up and in front of the camera, we could just keep on talking, which we did. <laughs> uh, and there was uh, a brief rant about work process, and and focus management and then i discovered that uh, i had forgotten to put my mic into the working position so now we're starting a follow-up follow-up <laughs> where we shall talk about uh, whatever about our current uh, workings our current projects we shall rant about stuff maybe the games we played the books were read? Mm -hmm. Could be anything. Yes. And uh, as a visual distraction, I am also having our world building inspiration board uh, in, in a side window here. So the, uh, the board basically goes like this. Architecture, architecture, architecture. Uh, Character portraits, character portraits, character portraits, spaceships, mm -hmm. spaceships, spaceships, and then sort of it sort of cycles in on itself. With a with a healthy do dose of mechs and robots and bionic arms and all that good stuff. Yes, as clearly seen in this very screen right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. So delightful! I love the Pinterest. You could get lost on there for hours. So easy. Unfortunately, I sometimes sort of forget that we have this uh, uh, that we have this account, so I don't. I only get lost here every once in a while. <laughs> uh, another thing that I try to uh, pin open is all sorts of clever, clever little technologies that uh, that help a bunch of humans living together in cramped spaces to sort of operate like gardening solutions and, and that sort of stuff so Nox what have you been doing the past week <laughs> uh, I've just been poking at short stories here and there uh, Lost Calls is one of them I've been working on some side projects as well just mm -hmm. out because I wanted to write stories that were science fiction but outside of the Chaos Nova universe like I wanted to be a bit silly with some of it uh, you know aliens teleportation that kind of thing just some really just properly sci-fi stuff there is it, there is a reason for some of this like in a few weeks ago I brought up the idea of submitting some of our stories to magazines and stuff like that and websites mm -hmm. and but we weren't. We're not too keen on submitting Chaos Nova stuff because we're not. We don't know about rights management and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Really, we want to keep control of Chaos Nova as much as we mm -hmm. can. And so, to that end, um, I was like, well, maybe we could write some just non Chaos Nova sci-fi stuff. So I think what I'm really doing is preparing myself for that. Like it, the stuff we submit to magazines probably won't have aliens and teleportation and stuff in it. But <laughs> I mean. It, 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 it helps me separate my mind between Chaos Nova and this other universe. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's sort of what I've been working on. And I've been working on this Faint Echo Lost Calls 
Uh, which, but this is another thing, right? I, if you watched the last episode, we touched on this briefly about the work process and everything. It's easier for me to work on Faint Echo now after we've gone through the forum <laughs> leakage <laughs> and done the whole Taniki Kaluvi thing because she's a character in in Faint Echo. So she and Corey are together on this ship. This is like the originally how they knew each other, um, and uh, it's. It makes more sense now because I understand Nikki better, and that's all mm. thanks to you, sort of bringing the focus. To be quite honest with you, <laughs> the, the editor at work, and uh, yeah, so it it just makes things easier, having a better understanding of things. You feel more comfortable writing stuff like about Nikki and Corey when you've got a better understanding mm. of their sort of relationship and real names. Uh, so yeah, it's good. Uh, that's what I've been up to, just faint echo and. Uh, Grey Epsilon, which is the sci-fi nonsense that I'm talking about. The uh, I've treated Grey Epsilon a little bit weirdly. It's like um, it's like the it's there's an overall arc, but instead of there being like chapter 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 that lead into one another, it's more like they're short stories contained in chapters mm -hmm. that follow a, a an ultimately larger arc. Over the course of all these sort yeah. of minor well, that's, episodes, that's, the, uh, that's I think is a very, very valuable format or very valiant format because that's that's the format that I would ultimately uh, see fit for the whole taking flight as well because the material that we have right now kind of works better as uh, uh, standalone short stories that connect into a large, larger story than actual chapters in the larger story. Or I mean, I think we can do better uh, yes. if we treat oh, yeah. them if we treat them as self-contained stories that link up to a bigger story. But if we try to keep them in a very sort of chaptery format, we 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 might end up with not so good story. I'm this afraid. this is a good point because the it's very base, but the connection between certain parts, like the Tucker Nine thing, and then they're on our chaos. The link feels really forced mm -hmm. sometimes when you read it. It's ah, like, oh, this is really clunky, and not mm -hmm. in the clunky sense of this is dirty text, but clunky as in this is bad for the story. Clunky, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I think I agree. If we treat it like, you know, short stories, large arc, as opposed to this chapter, and then this chapter, this chapter, and they all, and they must tie together somehow. No, that we shouldn't force anything like that. Yeah. And returning to the idea about work process, uh, I, I kind of think that for us, making the end result or the end goal uh, Having a shorter self-contained thing as as an end goal works better than a novel length thing, because uh, if I if I think back to the seeker experience, then it was very much the the thing where you you know you pull yourself together, you make all the effort, and then you finish this thing, and it's only a small dead pit of a bigger story and and the whole whole bigger story is still to edit and and sort out and that wasn't even a very long book Seeker is a <laughs> fucking novella yep. <laughs> so so in that sense I, I think we will just uh, yield better results if we if we make like short short meals one at a time and then they tie in together because yeah keeping a sort of large arc in mind I have no trouble with that at least I don't think I do <laughs> um, we've, we often talk about treat and take and flight as just it's sh the short story collection has helped solidify this a little bit because we've taken chunks of taken flight and turned them into or have the intention of turning them into short stories like uh Picking up trash is one. I think that's in the minimal edits folder, actually. Mm -hmm. Destiny's Trials is another one, and then I think just just Control Group is a completely separate thing, right? It's not the uh, nuts and chaos. Yeah, cryo. that that can that can work uh, 
in or outside of Chaos Nova Universe, really. I just okay. I just sort of had the idea that it it could tie in to the future Chaos Nova Universe, but it this it would be something that is happening like in the more immediate future. So it's like from from Chaos Nova perspective, it's an ancient story and it's Earth related story, so it's it's sort of even more removed. Hmm. There's there's room for it. <laughs> there's yeah. room for it. Yeah. So um, basically, when it when it comes to story concepts and all that, there is always this adaptation room, because uh, because the way we have set up our guidelines or the world building assumptions is that if you already have like the start of a story, and then if, and then you think like, mm, okay, this is like standalone story. But I would like to fit it into Chaos Nova Universe. Then all you have to do is just to make it uh, make make sure that the, the assumptions apply. Yeah. And uh, and if we go far back, uh, far enough back in the timeline, then we get basically back to the Earth normal as it is now. So. Uh, so we have to worry about less and less of those assumptions so stories that get started as just random something can actually in in certain in a certain sense of the <laughs> <laughs> can can actually fit uh, in universe mm -hmm. um, scroll the board again a little bit so we've got, we had Picking Up Trash, Destiny's Trials, and then I cut um, Nux and Chaos The Awakening because it, it, with the quote-unquote current thinking, it's like they, that, that happens later in, in Taking Flight now. They don't wake up in the first few chapters, and when they do wake up, uh, Corey and Trouble are involved in that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we can I, we could still treat the whole them waking up as a short story, and then when it comes to bringing all those, like if we do the taking flight all together, um, we could we could bring the bit on at the end that Corey and Trouble to, sort of turn up and rescue them. So there's that small self-contained Nux and Chaos together on the ship, and that's the bit we include as the quote-unquote short story. But then when it comes to the whole Taking flight as a longer book, you've got we we then put the Corey and Trouble bit on at the end. I'm messing with the light. It's, <laughs> it's getting darker outside. The super lantern. <laughs> oh, show it. That's excellent. Uh, right now, the lamp part uh, has uh, has fallen into the enclosure it's actually supposed to be sort of like um, sitting on the rim but yeah this is uh, this is an old French press uh, you know the out outer outer hull what I don't know what you say about the how would you say about the plants and shit not hull but the outer thingy shell yeah, the out uh, outer uh, shell of a French press. So it, it was supposed to keep uh, the inner uh, glass jug uh, warm for a while, and uh, and the innards broke, and I didn't have the heart to throw it away, <laughs> <laughs> as you do. I like. See now, th the thing is, when you lifted it up and all the inside looked all at an angle and everything, I thought that was kind of Art Nouveau, right? Like how that was how it was supposed to be. <laughs> so like, oh, very modern and arty, you know. So you done well there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Meanwhile, I have scrolled on to some. Habitats and uh, and urban units and whatnot. Is this the sort of uh, buildings that are tower farms and things like mm -hmm. that? Yeah, yes. I love that stuff. Tower farms and uh, aquatic sort of 
I don't know, raft cities and all that. And Antarctic bases that kind of look like Tardy Rates. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So basically, uh, the uh, gathering c certain ideas to um, to express the idea that if you have a future on another planet that you have used a lot of resources to get to and you establish a new colony there and you establish a whole new way of life there then you do not by default end up with uh, something that you necessarily see right now when you look out of the window uh, and actually the same thing applies if you go back in time far enough if you uh, if you look at one very famous uh, I think it's it, it is considered a city a uh, very famous city site in Turkey that basically had like Lego brick houses very closely together you got in through the roof and you had like small communities and I, I think it was extended families and you had the uh, I think I'm, I might be mixing up different uh, archaeological sites now, but basically you you had all the all the living spaces stacked together and uh, and I think they they were in a walled enclosure and there, there there basically were no streets. you just got in from the roof and uh, the same with the uh, was it the Anasazi or the Hopi? Who had uh, who also had the sort of stacked uh, st stacked uh, living units where you had uh, the uh, family cluster in in a or, or the dwellings that were sort of like stacked and very close together and you had to climb a ladder to get in so like it it on one hand, it makes perfect sense if you if you look at the way of life or if you look at the how how this uh, settlement got started. So it's 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 not that what you see what uh, what we see out of the window right now is the default way of how it's supposed to be. It's just how things developed in this specific place in this in this specific time based on this specific technology that we have. So if we change all that, we don't end up with uh, with what we see uh, out of the mm -hmm. wind right now. So <laughs> this is this is one of my <laughs> passionate topics. <laughs> this is something something we have argued about with uh, different creatives and uh, like no 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 <laughs> 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 uh, developmental bottleneck technology bottleneck different conditions apply no. <laughs> This is one of the main main discussion points we had about Escape from Caressa as well. Yeah, when yeah, yeah. It yeah. was Escape from Caressa. I described it very in a very Western, like today yeah, standard. Yeah, yeah. And my roads. my point there was that uh, if you go through all those steps of space exploration, transporting people, transporting matter, new homeworld settlement, and all that, you don't necessarily end up with a Reagan era U.S. city. Like you might. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe somebody has a specific fetish, or or maybe maybe there's some specific reason for some sort of thing, but uh, but you very likely don't. Uh, the same thing, uh, the same or, or like similar uh, similar uh, mechanism, similar argument applies to many technologies that uh, the sort of West centric. Uh, Academia has considered, or, or West-centric uh, study tradition has considered as natural. So for us, inventing a wheel as a, a large-scale uh, transportation aid seems natural because we have flat surfaces and the wheel is, is, is enormous help. It, it is revolutionary, mm -hmm. it is important, it is relevant. And and when such a scholar would look at another a group of people elsewhere, who had very uh, very advanced uh, uh, 
uh, memorization techniques and all that, but they didn't have the wheel, they immediately conclude that, oh, they didn't have the wheel, therefore they must be back in their development. But actually, uh, and I'm talking about Peru, so actually uh, they had toys with wheels, but they didn't use wheel as a uh, as a, as an everyday transportation aid because the terrain was such that it wouldn't make any sense to put it there. <laughs> so it's like yeah you, you don't you don't uh, you don't put uh, wheels on uh, I don't know you don't put a, put wheels on horse <laughs> you don't put <laughs> wheels on llama <laughs> and uh, and and same same sort of line of questioning actually helps to well I, I find that that uh, questioning those very defaults like the way we are used to might not necessarily be how it's supposed to be uh, helps to figure out much more interesting settings and much more interesting uh, even societies because mm -hmm. if some some uh, sort of if some small enough technological thing sparks a whole other branch of technology tree that can lead to whole other logic, basically. So that's 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 why I'm saving all these uh, Antarctic uh, study bases and aquatic cities and uh, and domes and uh, and growth towers here. <laughs> that's that's what this is all about. I do love a good dome. <laughs> <laughs> There are also underwater domes in our in our uh, pin board. Nice. It's all good for inspiration. It's all good to get mm -hmm. the brain sort of lubed up in this yeah, area. Yeah. So uh, none of none of these images are like one to one what we intend to describe, but they are more like thinking in terms of uh, what could be and on which conditions and so on. I've got, yeah. I've got these uh, spray paint pictures in my room that were mm -hmm. done by that guy in Tenerife, and even just look at like you could, you can't, you can't look at them and and immediately think of something in Cal to go with them. But what you can do is you look at them and they sort of inspire you. Like, mm -hmm. how did this domed city end up on a on mm -hmm. a spire and things like that? Like, you mm -hmm. ask questions. I don't think it's oh you should look at that picture and take it one for one. It's like you look at that picture and it makes you ask questions and how you can make the ideas or it is inspiration. That's all it really comes down to at the end mm -hmm. of the day. It's like hey, gets the brain thinking. Yeah, like you see Good. an idea and your brain sort of chews on it and it will then spit out another idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hopefully. I, drifting through Twitter the other day, I saw one word that sort of triggered me into a whole idea necrofauna and it's the idea of bringing back like extinct series it's uh extinct species mm. using like dna and cloning and replication techniques and things like that and that on its own just opened up a whole like my brain took that and ran with it you know like necrofauna this sounds like an amazing idea like a uh nature reserve full of purely extinct animals and things like that that have been left to their own devices so humans don't get involved and stuff like that it just it, none of these ideas might get used but it just gets the ball rolling and it and it there might be some things from this that you can use in other stories mm -hmm. maybe not on a whole but then one thing will be like oh okay well i thought about that we maybe we can use that so it's just nice it gets the brain mm -hmm. the cogs whirring so mm -hmm. to speak besides uh, getting back to the whole work process, uh, flow management, uh, focus management, anxiety management thing, it, it's that um, collecting the inspirational material or putting together the inspiration board is something that it doesn't feel like work. So you can sort of cheat yourself or you can outsmart <laughs> yourself. Uh, and sort of get the get the bow rolling while like, oh pretty pictures pin 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 and actually you you trick your brain into into working and then uh, when the moment strikes then you're suddenly ready okay let's do this <laughs> <laughs>
That's good. Uh, Pinterest, especially when you treat it like that, and you come, it's one of those things that you do a bunch of stuff. Doesn't feel like you've done a bunch, but then mm-hmm. you come back to it, and it's like, holy crap! Look at all this material, you know. Yeah, and uh, as it turns out, some again, it didn't feel like work, but uh, once uh, we were, what was it? Uh, Escape from Caressa. It turned out that a whole bunch of these images actually turned up helpful for uh, getting the sense of certain scenes mm-hmm. well they did to me <laughs> <laughs> so there is that and of course it, the usefulness w- varies and the mileage varies but but yeah basically it's 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 a way of uh, of tricking your brain with escape from Caressa I think it helped me to understand the sort of atmospheric like looking up seeing two suns and things like that like things like that, it helps me visualize a bit better. Or seeing a different sun. Yeah, the yeah the point there is that the sun is different. It might be yeah. one sun, and where he comes from, they have uh, they have two. So it's like, wait, what did I I can't remember anything from last <laughs> night. What did we do off the bar? Oh, I think I haven't written those notes in. Uh, I intended to write in some notes uh, where the guy who wakes up and is informed that. Uh, that he is now part of some sort of game. I will. <laughs> I will also want to get rid of the congratulations. You have been kidnapped. Notice. I will, I, will, I, will, I will want to write the better better notice. But basically, the guy who wakes up uh, and finds himself uh, in a different world uh, on somebody's uh, uh, bal- arena, game arena. Uh, some of his first thoughts could be that he doesn't remember last night very well so I was like uh, what did we drink was it uh, and where are, where are my pals and then he's sort of like oh this place doesn't feel right and then he stumbles outside and like wait just one sun what the fuck and the sky yeah. is the wrong color and it's it's not just his head actually the 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 gravity is uh, is slightly different or or off or uneven because that's a thing in uh, in our techno bubble. <laughs> Escape from Caress is a cool story. I've enjoyed that one. Um, Scribe and the Doctor, that's another good one that I've enjoyed. You've brought a lot of character to Dex Ash! Uh, <laughs> 16, he's excellent. Um, I'm, I, t- it's, yeah, it's nice. Um, what were the, what's the other one? Split person. See, this is the other thing, right? Split personality one. Working on that that first chapter or that first short story from Split Personality One. That's another one where I sort of created a throwaway environment with the <laughs> Goliath gates and things like that. And then you you've we've come to it together, and you've suggested, oh, how about doing it this way instead with the ships as buildings and it's a sort of shady area in the port immediately giving that much more character and a much more like oh i want to explore this place now it's not just an area we're passing through to get to somewhere else it's like oh this is kind of interesting so, but uh, and mo- uh, and some and sometimes okay sometimes i have gathered pictures and i have thought about it and i have asked the so how did they get there and what the, what is the basis of this home world and uh, sometimes i have gone through a sort of uh, uh gradual building process when i when i uh, reach those modifications when I when I reach those ideas but sometimes I just pull shit out of my ass <laughs> <laughs> so, that was that was the latter but I think uh, the thing is that if you're if you're exposed to certain materials enough and if you're exposed to certain questions enough and if you're su- if you're exposed to certain instructions enough uh, some some ideas will just sort of start to formula, formula, formulize, <laughs> formalize uh, without you even uh, consciously trying to build them up. They will just sort of pop out from the groundwork. So, for example, uh, I do regularly read the atomic rocket site. I don't understand half of it. When uh, when it gets to the equations, my eyes just roll back and uh, yep. and I'm unable to keep up. Although over time, I have actually been able to. Uh, I ha- I have actually my my head has actually 
reach the point where I understand uh, where I truly comprehend what delta v means like I, <laughs> I used to I used to read it I used to sort of logically read read all about it and read all the all the explanation about it and and sort of like I I had all the pieces but I couldn't I couldn't sense it in a way so it's like it's it's something that you memorize but not something that you know and uh, and uh, even though my literacy doesn't allow me my literacy limit limits don't allow me to understand half of what's in there uh, even so just poking at the material uh, makes me uh, immediately think of certain questions like oh so how does the heat exchange work like this this is a big one the uh, uh, the heat exchange in vacuum and uh, and there was another one which was like which was which was kind of a big one but yeah uh, I had the uh, torch uh, ship concept that you that you have a ship that's uh, capable of accelerating as far as long as you have to and then start de decelerating so it's like you you almost don't have the you know <laughs> normal <laughs> normal flight <laughs> anyway so the idea is that if you're exposed to certain topics enough some some stuff is just starting to sort of click and and uh, and see through even if you don't consciously try to get it so that's 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 the that's the point that I wanted to make I think yeah, there's another element of it that um, after you, after we've worked through the material for uh, long enough for uh, split personality again as the example, we worked through that, and then at the end it was kind of like, this makes sense, mm -hmm. right? This makes total sense. We're near a spaceport, and we've got these decrepit ships, you know, mm -hmm. shady area. It makes sense that we're oh, going yeah, through. This is, yeah. the, now I remember now the point that I actually wanted to reach was that if you're exposed to certain material uh, heavily enough then you reach a certain point where the aspals start making sense so so whenever you you think that you're just pulling some stuff out of your ass but actually uh, your brain is tapping into the stuff that you have already been reading and studying and uh, and and it, it just it picks it picks better shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And on that note, I think uh, maybe it is time to finish this uh, chat. Yeah, can do. It's I don't have anything else to add. Yeah, me neither. I I just uh, I I ran out of ideas. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's getting dark here. You're starting to look like Holly from Red Dwarf. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, I have an IQ of 1,200, 12,000, and I still can't figure it out. <laughs> this reminds me, we need to put some of those uh, Red red Dwarf uh, clips up soon. Yep. Uh, let's add this to our to-do list. It's a to-do list, Red Dwarf <laughs> quotes. It's in the list. It's in the list, and with, and with that, we shall wave goodbye. Thank you very much for watching. Bye. Bye.